So if you followed the series with Ava so far, this is video number four. If you haven't seen the previous videos, go back and check it out. You will not want to miss any part of her story. Ava is a nine-year-old blue throat macaw. She's female and she was gifted to me. So my goal is to see if I can free flight train her where she flies trained outside. Now this all starts inside <laughs> and it starts using my batting net so i have a batting net set up in my backyard exclusively for flight training so we take ava into the batting net to see what she's capable and willing to do she's not really willing to do much as much as she's capable of doing stuff uh her previous owner told me that she is capable of flying we noticed she's missing two to three primary feathers on either side of her wings um so unfortunately we have to start at some starting point and that is not with Ava willingly taking a flight but us highly encouraging a flight. Now if you've seen a lot of our videos in the past you've seen us have to utilize this sometimes and the key here is that even if this is your own starting point with your bird that you phase out of it as quickly as possible and on to really positive forms of training where the bird is choosing to take the flight and is getting rewarded for it. So I just got to show you where we're starting because this is real life. This is the stage where they get lost. So what you hear Dave referring to with Ava, how he makes a comment like, this is scary. This is kind of the phase where if she were to get out side at this phase, it would be the most dangerous. And what he means by that is she's capable of flying. However, she doesn't have the skills mastered and you can tell that not all the controls are understood. It's kind of like, who's flying this thing? Um, and that's when birds are terrifying if they get outside at that point because they're more driven by fear at that point. The desensitization isn't done, so they're often easily spooked. And when they're spooked, they do panic flights. So when they do panic flights, they aren't thinking. They're just going, and they have full speed ahead. They don't understand how to put on the brakes. The maneuvering isn't there. It's just kind of out of sheer panic of having to learn the skill right then and there versus easing in, building confidence, and learning skills in a more adaptable way, um, in a more confident way as well. So what he's saying is, please don't lose this bird or accidentally let this bird get outside. A lot of the times that happens through people transporting a bird from indoors to outdoors to an aviary, to a travel carrier, to whatever, for getting the birds on their shoulder, walking outside. Um, it could be anything. So just be really, really mindful. Make the right choices when you're transporting birds. Try to use a carrier most times, especially if you don't have handling well with your bird. You can't hold its feet or you can't really like cover or hold your bird in any sort of safe way to get it to and from certain places. Consider just using a carrier. Um, associating a carrier in a way that's not just the annual vet visit is fantastic. So your bird ideally should be used to going in and out of a carrier no problem because it's been associated 
associated positively. Like maybe your bird goes in a carrier to go on a road trip with you, go in the car, go into the batting net, go into the aviary, go on a walk with you, go into a backpack with you to, to go to its favorite place. Like just all these different things are positive associations you can make to make it so that your bird's more willing to go into a carrier. Um, but I just wanted to take a second and <laughs> explain what Dave meant in case all of you were like, what are they talking about? It, we're just recognizing the fact that she's in a phase of her training that is a very dangerous one, a very vulnerable one, that it's paramount she doesn't accidentally get outside. So I wanted to share our starting point with Ava and her flying and us, how highly we had to encourage her motion forward to fly to and from us because it's realistic. It's what some people have to go through in order to flight train their birds. Now I'm not saying that this is the tactic you have to use, but in some circumstances when you just cannot get that bird to take that first flight, you start here. And some people starting points look different than others. I would love for them to all look amazing and all be where the bird chooses to fly, but that's just not the case in a lot of especially older birds. Um, the cool thing is this didn't last long at all before I had this amazing breakthrough moment that I had no idea was coming. I was working on just hanging out with Ava and developing my relationship with her, not only through feeding her in the morning and in the evening and throughout the day as I'm working on diet conversion, but also just spending quality time with her inside the batting net, just hanging out, not asking her to fly, not asking her to really do anything except for just hang out with me. And I think this went a really long way because as I was on my back porch in the netted in area and the screened in area, she jumped to me randomly. She just hopped to me and I freaked out. I was so excited. I told Capri to grab the camera in case I could get her to do it again. And I coaxed her and coaxed her and she did it again. And I was so excited. Now I am. Oh my gosh, look at her. Okay. So come like right here. Come here. Gosh, come here. Come on, you just did it. Come here, Ava. Come here, Ava. Come on, Ava. Come on. Oh, Ooh. good job. Look at you. Look at you. You did it. Let go. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do it again? Come on. Now, in the meantime, I have been working with her in the quarantine aviary and getting her to learn target training. So I'm gonna try doing a little target training with Ava for the first time. She's never been in the aviary before. I literally just put her in here. And I need her to stay in here. She's been sleeping out in our house on one of the foraging trees, but I need her to sleep in here tonight because we are leaving and I don't wanna leave her unattended. And I don't have my clicker, so I'm clicking my tongue. And she just reached out and touched it like a pro. She's still eating a little bit. I offered it a little early. Okay. Too early. Still too early? I know you want to go this side. I also broke this pine nut into three pieces because she's such a slow eater. Ready? Good job. I found that she's pretty comfortable in cages. Like she prefers it when I have her out on my back deck area that's all screened in. I always put her on just like a tea stand or something or a play stand. She always puts herself away in the cage. I'd like to see that change just because I that tells me that she has a smaller comfort zone and I would like a larger comfort zone because if she's going to be a free flighted bird she needs to have a much bigger comfort zone so we'll see so that was a great very first target training session good job Ava we've been working on videos with her teaching her some tricks and teaching her that she can learn and it's been so fun and so exciting and I think it's what built the relationship up to the point where she surprised me and hopped to me 
The other amazing thing I found out is that when I brought her inside and put her on one of my foraging trees, the magic of my kitchen, which a lot of you will understand this if you've seen my Morgan series on Morgan the Camelot Macaw with the foot defect, Morgan would only fly to my back <laughs> and only if I was in the corner of the kitchen originally. That's how her flight journey started. It was with me not looking. Um, Ava is also obsessed with that corner of the kitchen and she just flew to me there one day and I was like, what's going on? So I started playing with that and having her fly to me in the kitchen and really coaxing her and being like, yeah, come on and I've got treats and I'm gonna make this super duper awesome and working with what she was willing to give me. She's actually more willing to fly on her own um, of her own choice in my kitchen than she is in the batting net, which was really interesting. However, everything has transferred over to the batting net, so it's not so much like that forward momentum of having to encourage her. She's actually choosing to fly, and it is the best feeling ever. So again, no matter where you start with flight training, just understand what your end goal is and always work towards that. Try to phase out having to highly, highly encourage your bird to fly to getting them to be able to make that choice and find enjoyment in flying because that's really the key if you can get them to enjoy flying they're going to want to fly and make the choice to do so Ava. Ah! that was amazing that was all her Ava. Ah! Cool. she went all by herself to him Good girl. Hey, you. Eva, come on. Good girl. <laughs>